Okay, we're coming up to the back side of the ranch now. Coconut trees. Just knock those off. The machete. Cut off the edge and you get a nice drink of water, coconut milk water for those. As you can, this is the Ite palm leaf I was on about. These two buildings have recently been re-thatched with the leaf from the Ite tree. And uh, these are called barracons. But like with most farms, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of rubbish all over the place. This is where the vaqueros, the local cowboys, they come and stay here in these buildings in their hammocks when uh, they're working, doing a roundup or something like that. You have to round up quite regularly here. Ooh, the lime's gone. You have to round up quite regularly here um, because legally you have to brand all your newborns by six months. Otherwise, the rustlers aren't rustlers, they're legally allowed to take your cattle, which is not nice. Anyway, around here, all these posts and everything is where we tie up all the horses and bathe them and feed them after a day's work. And then straight ahead is the ranch house itself. Mango tree there a lot. The one behind it. The mangoes will be coming into season and dropping in the next month or two on most of the trees. Although this one's up. Oh, there we go. Mangoes. So we've got mangoes there. That's my new Hilux double cab pickup. Solid diff, leaf spring suspension. The best vehicle for the Pioneer. And Tommy's old Series 3 Land Rover. And uh, believe it or not, this drives all the time. The main ranch has there, the kitchen, the living room. There's Tommy's Jaguar skin on the wall. Look at that. We're going to have a closer look. That's the hammock I'm going to be in in a few minutes. There's the Jaguar skin. the main ranch house. This is the back end. Now these posts here are to extend the rafters down from the roof and add a, um, like a vine plant type protection to that meshed area because what happens is the rain comes from behind us straight in onto the building and just goes straight in through that mesh. So with a bit of you know, things like um, passion fruit creepers and stuff like that would prevent all that and also uh, allow the breeze to come in still. But of course he hasn't got around to doing it yet. Uh, this is the back end. More coconuts. And down here We've built two little guest houses. Um, they've not they've been in this condition actually for quite a long time and they haven't been uh, finished. But they would be an awesome little place for people to stay once they are done. So, this is it. side of it. You can sling a hammock and relax and the other side of the wall would be the bedroom. Mm -hmm. okay, the roof. And another one over here. I think there's some boys in there staying here at the moment. There's some guys staying at the moment. we'd like to do is right here, 
going to build another long barracon, red brick like this. A nice long one, 40 feet long or so. But it would have a different roof. The only problem with leaf roof is the, uh, the bats and the insects and the animals which get in there. Because um, if you're using the place for either guests or for um, putting large amounts of food, like 10,000 billion peanuts that you've just harvested before you can take them off to market, you don't want them to be in an insect and animal infested location. So just directly ahead of us now, we're looking to put the barracon in for that. 40 foot long building. And then up here somewhere, we're looking to put a horse corral. The only problem with the horses being so close to the, um, the main house is um, although they look really nice and have fun and everything else, they also have lots of flies and shit with them. And um, they also, they've got 10, 12 horses all wanting to feed at the same time sometimes have a bit of a scrap and a kicking session and break things down. So we're trying to uh, prevent that. What we're thinking of for that is to build a round wooden corral um, which the horses would go into and within it or just on the outside of it they'd have their own sort of, there we go, more mangoes coming up. Yeah, and on the inside or outside of it, they'd have their own feeding trough, which means they, they can get their food and the other horse can't nick it, and they can't fight each other. Um, and we're probably going to stick that directly ahead of me now, about 30 metres away from me, um, just because there's issues to do with water, so we would need water there. We could bring more water in from the tank up there, another tank up, run some pipes down, have a tap, and then beyond that, looking at putting in another vegetable garden so it would make sense to have everything running in the right direction. I think it would be really cool. Now straight ahead of me, I wish I had a bow and arrow. I'm hoping you can see an iguana. I'm going to come in close. He's hiding behind the leaf. I'm moving slowly to try and get close to him. He's going to run like a lunatic in a moment. I wish I had a bow and arrow, because these guys are good eating. My chief jungle guide, Harold, this is his favourite bushmeat. He calls it jungle chicken. Uh, with this fisheye lens you can't really get a perspective of size really, but he's about two and a half feet from tail to head. go for the tree. But if I had a bow and arrow on me, he wouldn't make it. <laughs> well, maybe I should catch him and put a little diamond necklace around his head and uh, turn him into a, uh, a nice little pet. There he is, look. Iguana. Off you go, mate. Okay, now it's time for some hammock seeds. Okay, that's our mountain, the ranch anyway.